Okay, so to get things started, uh, in this lecture we're going to create the at mega328. So this is part one. In part one, we're going to design only the schematic symbol. In part two, we'll design the footprint of the Arduino at mega328. Okay, so make sure you got a clear sheet. We're going to RS components. The link will be in the resource section, so you can copy and paste that. Uh, I need you to go into the data sheet. So if you have the data sheet, that will also be in the resource section. This will show us the pins that we need to do and the, how the body should look like, more or less. So first go into File, Project, Integrated Library, and that will show up in your project view. Click Add New to Project, Schematic Library. And do that again, Add New to Project and PCB Library. Those are the basic bare bones that you need to create a component library. So now we're going to rename all of them. So make sure you go into a folder that we know, a common folder, that'll be our Dropbox. And in Dropbox, I want you to create a new folder and rename that Ultium Libraries. All the libraries that you create from now on, I want you to store it in this folder. This makes it very easy to find all your component libraries. So create, call this one, Atmo Microcontrollers. And in one library, you can store more than one micro microcontroller. Click Save. Uh, now you can copy and paste, or you can just select that. You can just delete the extension. Copy. And now we just need to save the integrated library. Save. Okay, so you can see all of them are more or less the same, uh, same name, just to keep everything consistent. Okay, so let's create the body of this Atmel chip. Okay, so we have multiple bodies uh, or configurations or packages that we can use for, for this. So we want to focus on the 32 TQFP package. This is the package that we want. You can create it more or less the same. But I'll show you exactly how we're going to go about doing this. Okay, go back to Altium. Click on Place. And go down to Rectangle. The body will be more or less a rectangle for this. Okay, make it round about that size. Make sure your grid is 10. To change your grid, press G on your keyboard. Just move your rectangle to the center and go back to your data sheet and then either print this document out or you can keep it on a separate monitor okay now let's add the pins to it we don't need a uh, pin zero you can delete that one do rotate press space okay and then do the rest now uh, this this will be quite tedious so i'm going to end up uh, speeding up this process just to make it uh, non-tedious for you Then 11, 12, and continue. As you can see, I'm speeding up. Put that on one side, and then do the rest for the other side. Because it's a 32 pin, we want it to be eight on each each side. So we just move that over there. Make it slightly smaller because we know we can fit uh, more pins than usual. Just estimate how much there's 8 over there and then move that with that. So there's 8 on that side as well. And then we can move it over there. To make it look nice, we can make it look square and almost equal and almost symmetrical. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the, the basic structure of how it looks. Now, uh, you can either name it according to the data sheet or you can name it according to the Arduino pin names. I prefer to use the Arduino pin names because when I'm referring to it in, this, in schematic or programming, it makes it much easier to handle. So go ahead and start naming. Double click on it, on the pin, and you can start naming it. Display name is the how it displays, and then you have the designator, which is uh, what pin it re refers to, and that designator refers to the PCB pin. Okay, so display name we're gonna name it D4 for that one, and you can just follow along in naming each pin. On the ground. I'm going to speed up a little bit now just to so it doesn't become tedious. You can follow along or you can just copy the, the picture I've posted in the resource. D7, D0, D1, D2. Move off to B3, uh, to B4, and you can do the rest. A ref is basically analog reference. A0 is analog pins, and A1 pins, D1 is your digital pins, just for those who don't know. SCL and SDA are your I squared C lines. Those you can have multiple devices on one bus. Okay, to have reset, you put those uh, backslashes. And you got D1, RX, and TX. Those are your UART lines for communicating with your computer. But first, they go to the FTDI, which converts those signals to USB signals. Okay, and then we just uh, go back, just make sure we correct in some, most of them. Uh, just make sure you got all the relevant ones. Basically, the relevant function should show in the pin names. Miso. Okay, I think we got most of them. Go around and double check. Okay, so we're almost done with this component. We just need to do one vital thing. Just save it. Saving is one of the most important things you should do regularly. Okay, so now we need to give this symbol some information. Basically, so we can identify it and call it up in, in the library. We're going to use most of the information from the RS uh, website. Uh, we went to schematic library. Edit. And call it U. Capital U. Question mark. Question mark uh, relates to the designator. It's basically a, a generic placeholder for the designators. So when we are signing uh, designators in the future, it will it will help rename all of them at once. Okay, so we add uh, the information from comment. Um, we can add the title from the RS website, and we can do the same for description and symbol reference. With library link, you want to make it very easy to spot it. Okay, then you can add your name. So created by. Put my name. put the date created just so you know when or how long your component is or the history of your component or you can find if your component is outdated or not but your are stock number this is the most important it makes it much easier to generate a pool of materials and basically it makes it much easier to buy your components
Okay, um, let's see what else we can add. Um, we can add organization if you want. I don't think it accepts the parameter. We can just put it as company. And I'll just put Lumina on Nova. And there you have it. I think that should be enough. Um, in the future, we shall add a footprint, but that we will do in the next lecture. Just click OK for now. And don't forget to save. OK, so you can see everything is updated over there. Let's see what else we can do. OK, so we've basically done for with part one of the disk of creating a component. For the mini pin components, it takes a while. But for the small components, it's quite easy and quite quick. So in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to create the footprint of this component. See you in the next lecture.